The news flow is just absolutely mm. uh, terrific. What does it all mean for your clients and for your business? Well, I think not a lot is actually the, the, the true answer to that. I think global growth is, is going to be 3.5%, 4%. I think the Chinese economy, people have been predicting a, the hard landing for China for 20 years now, and it, it, it isn't. You know, every visit I have to China, I'm always impressed by the progress that they're making. And they're investing in real assets and real growth, and people constantly underestimate the Chinese ability to continue to grow their, their economy. Economy. And similarly in the US, I think the US economy is doing pretty well. It's great to see more investments. It's sad that there's so much share buybacks going, going on. But the US economy is going to be very resilient for the next two, two, two years. But Nigel, so do, do you just ignore the trade, you know, you know these trade wars? I mean, if, for me, it's escalating, right? And for me, you see the rhetoric, and I don't know whether it's only rhetoric from Western economies saying, like, what is going on? Why is the US doing this unilaterally? How ugly can it get? And that must have an impact on growth worldwide. I, I disagree on that. I think the, these are uh, you know, minor skirmishes at, at the moment, and you know, people are trying to protect you know d difficult industries, and the steel industry is a particularly difficult industry. You know, China produces 830 million tons of steel. The UK produces less than one percent of that, about seven million tons of steel. So we're we're tiny in that context, <coughs> and therefore it's very difficult for us to survive in those sorts of industries uh, anymore. But there's lots of other industries which we can do a great job in. Okay, what about cars? Right. So we understand there's a process now in place in the US to possibly target cars, foreign cars, German yeah, cars, yeah. UK cars. No, no I, th I think th th that may happen, but actually who produces cars where is, is an interesting question. You know, the last time I was in China, they're figuring out how to, how to export BMWs back to Germany, so <laughs> quite who owns what cars where. It's a very interconnected global economy, and in the interconnection of the global economy is one of the reasons it's been growing, I think, uh, quite strongly. But there's, it's only when contagion risk happens, not country risk happens, or product risk ha happens, that we see e economies falling away across the world. And my own personal view is that's only going to happen if there's a short-term spike in US interest rates as a consequence of what, what happens. Otherwise, there's going to be a lot of noise, a lot of political noise. You know, the Italian government's changed once every year for about the last 60 years, and the Spanish government is, is also. You know, the UK, the US, Germany, and China have very, very stable political right. systems all, all in all. <clears throat> Nigel, uh, you learned this at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology which is monetary theorists don't work in a vacuum. Do these set of events that we see, and as Catherine Rampel at the Washington Post suggests today, Mr. Trump bombing us back to 1680 mercantilist theory, do the bankers at some point, Powell, Draghi, Carney, they have to react to what we're seeing on our television screen right now, don't they? I think, uh, yes, I think, I think they've been very responsible. I mean, what we've seen from <coughs> central bankers, you know, um, Agreed. Uh, Draghi and Kant have been very responsible in the, in the last 10 years. I mean, if you look at the last 20 years, an amazing statistic, Portuguese bonds have outperformed the S&P 500. And so we've seen some extraordinary things happen in the, in the last 20, 20 years as a consequence of central bank intervention in the economy in a very positive way. And what we found is you can borrow money very cheaply from all people, in a sense, and that that's what's happened at a world world level and so financing is still very cheap <clears throat> and there's loads of great ideas going on there's lots of new and emerging industries happening and lots of new jobs being created as I'm, uh, undoubtedly we'll see in the statistics very very shortly in both the US and and the, and the UK so they can't stand back and do nothing but so far it, it's a skirmish Hopefully the politicians will see sense yeah. and actually we don't want the skirmish to become a war and a, tr a trade war is very different from a skirmish and you know motorcycles, uh, peanut butter and, and orange are, are not going to tr change you know, the world's economic growth. Uh, however, big things and big, big, a big trade war happening will change economic growth.